we've all experienced a lot of emptiness in this past year, this year of the pandemic. Very early on, when we were first sheltering in place and people were hoarding things, so you couldn't find hand sanitizer. There were empty shelves in the stores. It was hard to find toilet paper. People were hoarding that as well. Uh, emptiness in our stores, our churches were shut down uh, completely, really, those first few weeks. You remember that. So empty pews. And in a sense, our, our hearts felt empty as well. So much emptiness that it was uh, overwhelming. And maybe it's not that ironic for us as we're on the, on the, the eve of celebrating the, the most wonderful feast of our Christian faith, the, the Feast of Easter, the Feast of Resurrection, that the very first testimony, the very first evidence of the resurrection also involved emptiness. In fact, it involved an empty tomb. We know the story of, of the faithful women who went to the tomb to anoint the body because there hadn't been enough time for them to give Jesus' body proper burial uh, with very uh, just uh, tender and, and, and loving care for, for the remains of, of a person who had died. In the Jewish faith, that was so important to anoint the body with perfumed oil, to wrap the body in the, the most expensive linen cloth that the family could afford. It was done in such a hurried fashion, that is his burial. He didn't have time for that. These faithful women, they go to the tomb. The stone's been rolled away. They don't know what to make of that. And then an angel appears to them dressed in white and gives them a, a, very, a classic example of good news and bad news. He says to them, I know who you're looking for, Jesus of Nazareth. He's not here. That's the bad news. He's, he's not here. He's, he's gone. The good news, though, he shares as well. He's not here. He has been raised up. That empty tomb became for the early church and for our church up to this very day and age. That empty tomb is is the most powerful symbol for us of, of, of the resurrection and, and the new life. That God fills those empty spaces in our lives as well. We've all been through this. I, I remember so clearly when my own father died, gosh, over 41 years ago now. And I remembered a few days after his death and and going home, I was still in the seminary. And I went home and I saw the chair where dad normally sat in the living room. And it was empty at the dinner tables later that, that week. The, the head of the table where dad would always sit, that was empty. That emptiness was hard to take for, for everyone. But for my mom especially, I can't imagine how difficult it was for one side of the bed in their bedroom to be empty. But we need to remember that all of these experiences of, of emptiness are truly that two-sided coin, the, the good news, bad news. We experience that in, in very difficult ways and very profound ways, but our faith teaches us that that Emptiness is really a sign of hope, a sign of new life and resurrection. Some of the earliest teaching about that and the earliest scriptures about resurrection come from St. Paul. In fact, his first letter to the Corinthians this comes from chapter 15. Brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you, which you received and in which you stand firm. You are being saved by it at this very moment if you hold fast to it as I preached it to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. I handed on to you, first of all, what I myself received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried in accordance with the Scriptures, rose on the third day. Tell me, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how is it? 
that some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, Christ himself has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is void of content and, and your faith is empty too. Indeed, we should then be exposed as false witnesses of God. But as it is, Christ is now raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death came through a man, hence the resurrection of the dead comes through a man also. Just as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will come to life again. But each one in proper order, Christ, the first fruits, and then it is coming, all those who belong to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we belong to him and we hope to rise with him, each one, in proper order. It's an ancient belief that we have and that we hold on to, a faith that has, has uh, lasted and perjured through the centuries and, God willing, for centuries more. As we live this faith and we share this faith with those who are coming up behind us, you might know that every five years every bishop has to go to Rome for what's called the ad limina visit. That's Latin for literally going to the, the doorstep of someone. In this case, you're going to the, the doorstep of the Pope. And you go to meet the Pope and to give a, a brief report about, uh, about your diocese and how things are going. So just a few years ago, two years ago, about almost, uh, the Diocese of Fresno uh, was called to Rome with other bishops from California and, and really other parts of the world too uh, for this visit. And during one of the days where we had some time off, I met a friend who was living there in Rome, a Monsignor Spiteri, uh, who took me on uh, this uh, lovely, lovely tour of some of the underground excavations there in Rome, uh, some of uh, the newer catacombs that have been discovered. So parts of these catacombs are, are pagan, uh, before Jesus preached, before the, the faith was being spread. And they had inscriptions over the tombs there in those pagan parts of the catacombs, uh, inscriptions over the, the bodies of their loved ones. It said things like this, never more to love, farewell forever. In other words, this is it, no more, this is the end of things. And then you get to the section where you have burials where Christians were, were laid to rest and the inscriptions over their tombs, so very different. Until we meet again, alive in Christ, he is risen. Yes, that's it, brothers and sisters. This joyful message of life and hope, of life everlasting, of love without end, and it begins with an empty tomb. I want to read just a short part of, a, of an Easter Vigil homily that was given by my former boss, uh, Archbishop Gomez, down in Los Angeles. Uh, gosh, almost eight years ago now. Listen to this. In God's loving plan, all of history was meant to lead to the tomb of Jesus. As we just heard in the gospel passage for tonight, very early the sun had risen on the first day of the week, and they came to the tomb. So. We have also come to the tomb of Jesus. Like his first disciples, we find, to our amazement, that he is not there. Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, has been raised from the dead. Christ is alive. Tonight, the church wants us to realize, my brothers and sisters, that our lives are filled with divine meaning. See, our, our emptiness is filled. Our stories are a part of a much bigger story the story of the family of God, and the history of salvation. Salvation in Christ Jesus. Salvation in the Son of God. Salvation in the one who was sent by the Heavenly Father, who loved us so much that he sent his only Son, that whoever believes, believes in him may not die, but may have everlasting life. Amen. Alleluia. So, my brothers and sisters, God bless you. And, and everyone you love, always and in every way.